anything can be a weapon if you try hard enough. Why, take the chair I'm sitting on, for example. Hey, Mike, come here. No. All right, you just have to take my word for it. This is as true in video games as it is in real life, as proven by the many times we found a weapon that we assume is just a joke by the developers, only to later discover its true, terrifying power. Here are seven times we did just that. Enjoy, and beware spoilers ahead for the following games. Hey Mike, can I just, I just want to show you I'm something not, on the chair. No, no it's not, I'm not, I'm, I, so I'm not going to hit you with it. I just, there's something interesting on the chair I think you would appreciate looking at. Look, I'll come over there when you stop raising the chair above your head. I'm just raising it up because it's easier to see the thing I want to show you if it's raised up. I don't believe you. You will learn how a real soldier fights. You will forget everything Hollywood taught you. And if I catch you doing something else, you'll know it. As Venom Snake in Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, you have access to a vast amount of high-tech, specialised equipment. From the telepathically controlled rocket arm... ...to the dog that can parachute people into space... He's coming too. Right. Basically, there's no possible situation you can encounter that doesn't have a piece of Diamond Dog's equipment specifically designed to deal with it. This is why it may come as a surprise to discover, after the game's 18th mission, that you can sink research time and funds into developing a water pistol. You know, I think they invented those already. Maybe it's just hard to get them delivered when you live on an oil platform in the Seychelles. Though a squirt gun might seem like a useless joke weapon to take on an important mission, this splashy shooter is actually way more useful than it initially appears. For a start, it looks like a real gun, so you can use it to hold up enemies. Hands up. If you shoot them with it, the splash of water stuns them for just long enough for you to get in close and take them down with CQC. And most useful of all, it allows you to remotely short-circuit electronics, so you can disable generators from a distance without being spotted. That's not to say this water gun doesn't have any uses as an offensive weapon. In one of the tougher boss fights in the game, you go head to head with the boss known as the Man on Fire. See if you can guess what his deal is. The usual way of defeating the Man on Fire is to lure him into the vicinity of some water tanks and then destroy them, dousing his flames. So instead of the Man on Fire, he's just the man with burnt clothes. If you have the water pistol, however, you can deploy that instead, squirting him over and over again like you're disciplining a naughty dog. Presumably the next big thing the Diamond Dogs R&D department are working on will be a rolled up newspaper. Just give them six months and a couple of million dollars. Left. Dead Rising 2 is known for the inventive weapons that its hero, Chuck Green, can cobble together from items scattered around Fortune City, and for how little sense those weapons often make. For example, did you know that you can make a snowball gun out of a fire extinguisher and a super soaker? Bring it on. Or that all you need to make a lightsaber at home is a flashlight and some gems. Cool. If only, although the accidental dismemberments at cosplay conventions would go through the roof. One weapon you'd think couldn't cause anyone harm, though, is the toy spitball gun that Chuck can pilfer from toy stores. You can combine it with a tiki torch to create a fire spitter, obviously, but on its own it fires ping pong balls that dink harmlessly off zombies' heads with no effect, other than the effect of making you both look kind of stupid. I'm embarrassed for us both. However, there is one point in the game at which the toy spitball gun becomes an unstoppable engine of death. It's when bad guy TK is trying to escape in a helicopter. Quick thinking Chuck manages to tether the helicopter with a winch without even complaining about how he's having to do all this in his underwear, because this is Dead Rising and we thought it would be funny. 
but the helicopter isn't defenseless on account of being armed with a mounted turret and sturdy enough to withstand a great deal of punishment from melee or projectile weapons. What does do it substantial damage, however, are thrown weapons, and due to a programming quirk, the spitball gun's ping pong balls count as thrown items instead of projectiles. The delightful upshot is that armed with this colourful child's toy, Chuck can absolutely shred this bird in a matter of seconds. that was dramatic. Or it would have been if I were wearing pants. Dead Rising, you have only got yourself to blame. Ninjas are so good at killing people that you should consider it a huge personal favour that you're not being sliced in half by one right now. Thank you very much, ninjas. Even so, when a ninja's arsenal includes metal staffs, swords, flails, and two swords, as it does in the Ninja Gaiden remake on the Xbox, said ninja could be forgiven for picking one of those to take into battle, rather than the extremely unimpressive looking wooden sword. And at the start of the game, you'd be right to do likewise. The wooden sword has fewer moves than a regular sword, it can't perform essence or ultimate techniques, and worst of all, it can't decapitate people. And as decapitating people is how ninjas say goodbye to each other, that's a big problem. The thing is, although the wooden sword does suck, it can be upgraded. Seven times, in fact, more than any other weapon in the game. When the wooden sword has been fully upgraded, it transforms from the boring old wooden sword, like a toy from a museum gift shop that could barely put someone's eye out, into one of the most powerful weapons in the entire game, known as the unlabored flawlessness. Which from now on is what I'll be hashtagging all of my Instagram selfies. Unlabored flawlessness is more like a boat oar than a sword because of Japanese history reasons that you don't need to explain to me in the comments. This awesome weapon, yes I too can do puns, deals a hefty amount of damage and knockback. Furthermore, it has its own unique combos that are even more powerful than those of the legendary dragon sword. But wait, there's more! A unique ability of the unlabored flawlessness is that it gets more powerful the lower your health gets. This gives you 150% damage at 25% health, and 200% damage when you're at the lowest possible health. So be careful the next time you say that a wooden sword is a stupid joke weapon for stupid babies. Because there's probably at least three ninjas in the room with you right now. Normally, the painful financial transactions are ones where money is taken away from you for little or no material benefit. Stuff like parking fines, or 90% of gaming kickstarters. Anyone want a second-hand Ouya? Barely used. I mean, obviously. In Payday 2, though, the opposite is true. Thanks to the melee weapon known as Money Bundle, which was added to celebrate the game's Steam community reaching 1 million members, in this game, it's receiving money that's the most painful. Man. I'll never complain about bank transaction fees again. The weapon was added as a bit of a joke, because it looks ludicrous to be battering people with a stack of paper bills. Particularly when in reality you definitely do more damage just by punching them in the face, or even better, using some of that money to pay someone else to punch them in the face, while you sip a margarita. Slapping people in the mouth with a wad of hundred dollar bills might seem like a waste of time, but the money bundle is actually a surprisingly effective weapon when used correctly. Rapidly attacking with this fat stack delivers a pretty decent knockdown value compared to other melee options, allowing you to incapacitate your foes using cold hard cash alone. It must be pretty hard cash to actually kill someone, unless you've wrapped those notes around a brick or something. The money bundle is powerful enough that you could conceivably complete all of your objectives with it, simply by aggressively waving around a bunch of Benjamins. This is how I assume rich people operate on a daily basis. And I'll find out just as soon as I launch my gaming Kickstarter. Android micro console, anyone? No.
The current resurgence of things that were popular in the 1990s might have resurrected some regrettable fashions, but it also gave us Dusk, a loving homage to old school first person shooters from circa the late 90s. So it's not all bad. But if I see any one of you wearing a Kangol beret, we're gonna have words. Unless you're Samuel L. Jackson, in which case, carry on. Released in 2018, but looking like it's straight out of 1999, Dusk is inspired by Blood, Heretic, and Redneck Rampage. It tells the story of a nameless treasure hunter who must fight his way through a horde of Lovecraftian monstrosities to take down a sinister cult. As you can imagine, Lovecraftian monstrosities aren't exactly pushovers, so Dusk supplies you with all the monster-mashing equipment you need to get the job done, including sickles, dual-wielded shotguns, and rocket launchers. Or if you'd rather not bother with any of that nonsense, you can chuck a bar of soap at people. Pretty much every level in Dusk contains a hidden bar of ordinary, everyday soap that is somehow the most powerful weapon in the entire game. And when I say most powerful, it's not even a close competition. Throwing a bar of soap in Dusk guarantees you an instant kill even against the majority of the game's toughest and most dangerous bosses. What's more, because the enemies instantly turn from intimidating foe to cloud of red mist the instant the soap gets anywhere near them, you can pick the soap up and repeat the process, turning even a triple threat boss fight into the work of about 10 seconds. Originally, the soap did about 9,000 points of damage per hit, which some people thought made the game somewhat unbalanced. Not the developers, though, who decided that if it was going to be unbalanced, it may as well be the most unbalanced, and so they upped the soap's damage to 100 million points of damage because it would be funny. Which, to be fair, it is. See? This is what I don't get about you, bad guys. You know the hero's gonna win, but you just don't die. According to the marketing for Borderlands 2, the game contains bazillions of guns, and realistically, if you have one bazillion guns, not all of them are going to be winners. That said, most of the guns in Borderlands 2 at least manage to not irritate the living heck out of you when you fire them. The same cannot be said for the submachine gun known as Bane, which is acquired in a side quest partway through the game. McNally took the Bane. It worked like a charm against the spider ants, but the curse... <coughs> if you're hearing this, fine McNally. He may have left me for dead, but he doesn't deserve what the Bane will do to him. Nobody does. Bane is cursed, apparently, but rather than causing unlucky ricochets that kill your loved ones or something equally Twilight Zony, Bane instead chooses to be as irritating as it possibly can. For a start, whenever you have Bane equipped, your movement speed slows to a crawl, meaning it's going to take you absolutely ages to get anywhere. Then, when you actually fire Bane, you realize that each bullet is accompanied by an ear-piercing shriek. The first time you hear it, the sound is annoying. After a few magazines worth of it, you'll be pondering the logistics of how to bend the barrel around and make the gun shoot itself. Bane also shrieks at you whenever you swap weapons or reload. And will continue making these sounds even if you reduce the in-game volume to zero. The thing is, Bane is actually a really, really good gun. It has a staggeringly high damage output for a submachine gun, it has a hefty ammo capacity, and as a Hyperion brand firearm, it becomes more accurate the longer you fire it for. Who knows, maybe we can learn to love this misunderstood SMG. <coughs> nope, in fact I'd better uninstall Borderlands 2 just to be sure. <laughs> Given that Castlevania is populated by all-powerful vampire lords, you wouldn't expect a plate of curry to be a particularly dangerous weapon. Well, unless they accidentally ordered the garlic naan. But curry becomes weaponized in Nintendo DS game Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow, which would seem like a terrible slur against this spicy dish were it not for the fact that it's specifically listed in-game as delicious curry, in which case throwing it at your enemies seems like kind of a waste of a good jalfrezi. It's not easy to get hold of either. In order to wield the mighty power of the curry, you'll need to unlock the ability by heading to the demon guest house. Said guest house features rooms with clown themed decor and is haunted by a horrifying demon puppet master. <laughs> Definitely wouldn't be able to sleep in that guest house. Or ever again. In the demon guest house, you encounter a waiter skeleton. As soon as you disturb him, he lobs a plate of curry in your face and legs it. Guess he, uh, 
didn't want his tip. Steal the defeated skeleton's soul and you'll learn the aforementioned ability Delicious Curry. This enables you to fling beautifully prepared plates of curry out onto the floor, where they'll cause damage to anyone who comes into contact with them. This is particularly effective against slow-moving bosses, such as the otherwise fearsome Iron Golem. Which is weird, because the only time I've ever been physically damaged by a curry was the morning after a Vindaloo eating contest. Now that really was a dawn of sorrow. Thanks for watching this video about joke weapons that actually were really good. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to watch something else from us, uh, why not check out something completely different in the form of our D&D Oxventures. Here's one from us in which we go on a ridiculous adventure of some kind. Or if you want another video game thing, how about this down here from Outside Extra, which is about games that mocked you for trying. So why ever try? That's the lesson to learn there.